Hey guys. So here is my summary on the Sparta, North Carolina earthquake of 2020. I'm probably going to cut this up into pieces to make more sense, but I'll try to go in order and help make sense of it all. I was still asleep when it went off and all I can tell you is I was startled awake because I just heard this loud crash. That's what I heard. So what you're looking at is Allegheny County of North Carolina. I'll actually go out just a little bit here. Allegheny actually goes out into this area and it kind of forms a tooth if you're following my cursor. It goes back up here. So it's got two humps down here and kind of goes like that and up. So this is almost the corner of North Carolina. Ash County is actually the corner. And right up here above this line is Virginia. The county right here that's in the hump of the tooth of Allegheny County is Wilkes County, Wilkesboro, North Carolina, home of Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> I think that's how you say his last name. I haven't said it in a while, so I might have said it wrong, and I apologize if I did. Um, so I'm going to zoom back in to the area that I had it on. And all these little dots are earthquakes that we have had since August 7th of 2020. It's been almost 30 days. This is September 6th, 2020. And at this time, we've had 198 earthquakes registered. I'm phrasing it that way because some of these earthquakes were picked up by sensors that they added after the major earthquake. Sorry for the noise in the background. The cats are playing. They always wait until I'm talking. <laughs> but the USGS added four sensors, I believe, um, to help study the area. And I think that's why we're getting more sensitive earthquakes. And what I mean by that is we have these negative numbers that are registered as earthquakes. So like this one is right here. And even though it says negative 0.8, the circle is the same size as a, so there's a 1.8. So it's the, the circle is the same size as the negative 0.6. From what I can tell from the information that I've gathered, the negative numbers are a compensation because they're using different sensors than the main sensor. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I got interested in this because I wasn't sure how we could have a negative number so what they're saying is magnitude classifications are based on a lo logarithmic scale. So a tenfold drop in amplitude decreases the magnitude by one. If an amplitude of 20 millimeters as measured on a seismic signal corresponds to a magnitude two earthquake, then 10 times less corresponds to a magnitude of one, 100 times less corresponds to a magnitude of zero and a thousand times less corresponds to a magnitude negative one. An earthquake of mag negative magnitude is a very small earthquake that is not felt by humans. And I can, as I was following the numbers and what I was experiencing and that sort of thing, the negative numbers, I don't remember feeling any of them. 
but I did hear booms that were associated with the negative man magnitude. To continue on to this before I talk about booms, there's seismometers, seismographs, seismograms. They talk about the difference of those. Making your own seismometer. My brother made a seismometer and then a seismograph. The seismograph is the recording part, if I understand correctly. And he did that as his senior project in high school. I didn't actually get to see it in action because I was living with my mom at the time and he was living with my dad. I don't know uh, if it worked or anything like that, but I just know he had that as his class project. So you can find a lot of interesting information on the USGS, which stands for the U.S. Geological Survey. One of the resources for earthquake information is from IRIS, and I'll tell you what that stands for in a minute. Um, but I have to thank Mr. John Tabor, who is the Director of Education and Public Outreach with IRIS. They're based out of Washington, D.C., or at least one of their places is based out of Washington, D.C. And he helped me with finding the soundbite for the 5.1 earthquake. So IRIS stands for Incorporated Research Institutions for Seism Seismology. And it's one of the organizations that I believe works with other organizations such as USGS. It's, it, from what I found, all of these organizations work together. So IRIS was founded in 1984 with support from the National Science Foundation and is a consortium of over 100 U.S. universities dedicated to the operation of science facilities for the acquisition, management, and distribution of seismology. <laughs> I can't say it. Seismological data. IRIS programs contribute to scholarly research, education, earthquake hazard mitigation, and verification of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. IRIS is a 501c3 nonprofit organization incorporated in the state of Delaware, so I was wrong about DC, with its primary headquarters office located in Washington, DC. IRIS is governed according to bylaws, and so it goes into all of that. So one of the neat things about this website is that they have an area called Teachable Moments. So one of their Teachable Moments is uh, the August 9th earthquake for Sparta. So if you click on that, it'll bring up their own information, PowerPoint presentation and that sort of stuff. And I'm going to share some of that. So other than the PowerPoints, it also has recordings of the earthquake at other schools or at different schools, I should say. So Gorham Fayette local schools, a retiree, I don't know if that means the staff person has retired or um, the school is no longer doing the research. I, I'm not sure. But then we also have Rhodes College and their recording and Oklahoma Shakes and their recording of it. So let's take a look at Oklahoma because that's pretty far away. And these are all the different significant earthquakes that it's recorded. And it gives you the dates over here, and the strength of it, and the depth. So this one is, was in Guatemala. It was a 5.3 and 106.99 kilometers. I believe they're all in kilometers because the majority of the world uses matrix metrics is the wrong word so if I go to there's August 18th go to August 9th this is the North Carolina earthquake it was a 5.1 7.58 kilometers 
deep. So if I click on that, it gives you some of the basic information. Yeah, that's right, kilometers. Just a little bit of basic information. I think it's interesting to see that the different results and it all depends on the sensitivity of the machines. So what do I mean by that? Oh wait. Some other things that it tells you about the 5.1 earthquake is some of the movement information. So you can see the dots dispersing outwards in a circle, which is kind of cool. Whoops. We can have the Alaska component. So the station that's measuring us is up here compared to other stations. And the red dots are the motion going up and the blue dots are the motion going down. The red line is the great circle path. Other things that it has, it has the shake map, which is how many people felt it nearby. And it's not bringing it up like it used to. And that might be because it's been almost two months now. <laughs> so that might be why some of, why that's not working. I know when I brought it up under USGS, it, um, you could see the different colors. And the more it went out, the less people could feel it, but it spread quite a ways. Okay, so that's some of the things that you can find under the earthquake information. The other thing that is neat is you can go to the actual stations and pull up the information from there. So the station that we are pulling up is TVNC2, which is the Taylorsville North Carolina location to give you an idea. So to give you an idea of how far away the station is, keep in mind we're in the mountains. So distance wise, it's only 54.8 miles uh, from downtown Sparta to downtown Taylorsville. However, it takes about an hour and 15 minutes or more to get there, depending on traffic. It's close, but it's not close. <laughs> but the station that we're looking at is in the town of Taylorsville, and I'll show you where it's at exactly. So this is what it looks like when I first when I first came on and I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. And then I noticed when Mr. Tabor sent me an email, it had event right here, or sorry, right here after web a quarter. And so I played around a little bit more and I figured out what I was doing wrong. So here you see no events found, no events found, no events found. If I go under advanced features and click show most, it brings up a bunch of earthquakes. So events on the chart, North Carolina is right here, 5.1, that's the Sparta earthquake. Click on that. Maybe click on it twice and then click over here. And it brings it up for you. So the sound that we're getting ready to hear is the first little bit right here. 
it's uh let's see 45 55 So the sound bite that we're hearing from what I can tell is from the P to the S. And I'm going to try to turn it up real loud. Let's see how loud this is. So it still is nothing, even at full volume, is still nothing compared to what it sounded like in the house. Uh, something else to show you is if you click on map up here in Iris, it shows you all the different stations. So remember, these are um, stations related to schools that are studying um, and doing research. So the one that we're listening to is this one right here. But Sparta is right here where this four is. And the four means that there are four sensors in that area. After the 5.1, they added more sensors. Okay, that's the epicenter of the main one. That wasn't there the first time I had looked. <laughs> so they put four aftershock sensors in is at least what they're named. Oh, and I forgot to say the the one in Taylorsville, there's two in Taylorsville, but the one is very sensitive according to what Mr. Tabor said. Um, so these were added afterwards. And so if I click on it, you can pull up information. So like September 26th, there was a 2.2. I can click on it, it's loading over here, and it's these little bumps, and if we play the sound bite, it's not going to sound like anything. It just sounded like a twig snapping there at the very beginning. <laughs> um, so much different from the 5.1. Let's see, on September 20th, we had a 2.0. So if I click on that, Click here. So this one looks a little more significant. It looks different than the other one. So if we go over here, still sounds like a twig snapping. That sounded like something in a can. It almost sounds like there's some background noise too. So I wonder how much it, they, the size of meters can be so sensitive they'll pick up other sounds. I know when you, I looked at, when I showed you guys the map, a hundred years of earthquakes in North Carolina, there was um, one out, it was cut off the um, edge because it was on the Outer Banks, it was in Kitty Hawk, and it was a sonic boom. Um, and it was noted differently. It was a diamond rather than a circle. Um, quarries um, out in Mira, Nevada are going off, or at least while I was watching the earthquake information, it was going off all the time. Um, so if you think about quarries have explosions all the time where they're blasting the rocks. Those are big examples that will set off a seismograph, but I think other things can set them off too. Um, I imagine if a tree fell near the seismograph, I imagine that would register. I just don't know what it would register as. So 
So if we go back to the map, that earthquake I was looking at was actually near Wilkesboro. The 2.0 was near Wilkesboro. Let me go back to where I was. Let me zoom in. So if I go out to this one, this one is closer to my dad and myself. Well, closer to my dad. There's the Saturday 2.2. Sorry, I don't know what I just did there. So the 2.2 was actually up in Virginia. The epicenter. I'm assuming that's what those flags are, is that that's where the epicenter is. But it says North Carolina. 21 kilometers deep. But that's actually Virginia, because that's up past Galax. There's Galax right there. There's Christiansburg, Radford, uh, Blacksburg. So, mm, I don't know. So the map was something else I wanted to show you that Iris had. So you, you can actually go and find what uh, sensors are near you. So if I put in six, eight, So in Pennsylvania, near where my mom lives, that's actually our old email, our old zip code. There's two, there's Bald Eagle State Park and there's uh, Standing Stone. So Bald Eagle is probably the closest to my mom. Looks like New Jersey had a 3.1. So this is the station we're looking at. Let's see, where's my mom? All right. So here is State College. This is also where University Park is, which is main campus Penn State, to give you guys an idea. We got Philly over here, Pittsburgh over here. This one's probably the one that's closest to my mom. And that's Standing Stone. So just neat little things that you can mess around on and play with with this website. It's interesting. They have educational information. Again, if you go to the main page, it's got a lot of stuff that they have to share with you. And I'm actually going to have John take a look at this video before I, I make it public to make sure I didn't say too much false stuff <laughs> and go from there. Birthquake. What is birthquake? Oh, well, this is cool. Enter your birth date. The biggest earthquakes on my birthday. I wasn't really wanting to get my birthday away, so I may I'm going to cover up my birthday because I still want to try to protect my information as much as possible. Okay, so here's New Guinea and there's New Caledonia. So the islands are probably somewhere in there. What were they called? I want to give me Tonga. Is Tonga the same place as New Guinea?
So there's the Loyalty Islands. There's Tonga. Why was that not coming up before? So, so those earthquakes are all near each other. Right there, right there, and right there. So one of my experiences through this earthquake and the earthquakes following, I, I honestly can't remember if I felt or heard the earthquake, but there was a, we had eight four shocks, then the major earthquake, the 5.1, and then the rest of the 198, so 198 minus nine, what well, that gives you 179. 189. Those are all considered aftershocks. Part of my experiences is I would hear booms and the only way I can describe it is it sounds like somebody set a cannon off deep down below you. It just sounds like it's down deep. Now I could hear if it was distant down deep or closer to me down deep. There was a difference in that, and I don't know how to explain it, but it's just a boom. That's all there is to it. It's a deep sound, like a muffled cannon, and I don't know how else to describe it. Apparently, the booms are more, according to the USGS, are more frequent on the East Coast and I have a feeling that has to do with what they described as the differences between East Coast and West Coast, and I'll bring that up. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. They've been reported for a long time, and they tend to occur more in the northeastern U.S. and along the East Coast. Of course, most booms that people hear or experience are actually some type of cultural noise, such as some type of explosion, a large vehicle going by, or sometimes a sonic boom. But there have been many reports of booms that cannot be explained by man-made sources. No one knows for sure, but scientists speculate that these booms are probably small, shallow earthquakes that are too small to be recorded. Although ours did get recorded because they put extra sensors out. I think that's why we have so many recorded. But large enough to be felt by people nearby. So some of the booms I was able to associate with sensation. We had that boom feeling to the house. Um, some of them I did not. Sometimes I'd hear the boom and dad would feel it or I would feel it but dad would only hear the boom. He didn't feel it. Dad is about, as the crow flies, about two miles from me. So we had an interesting experience talking about what we felt or heard compared to each other only being two miles apart, give or take. So that was an interesting thing. Differences between our houses. Um, my house is up on a hill and there is a lot of rock around me. You can't dig without hitting rock um, and that sort of thing. I don't know depth wise if you take a drill and try to like drill a well. I don't know how much rock in that sense. But dad built his house and when they came to drill the well, they actually said they went 700 feet before hitting rock. And so what I think they're saying there is the big shelf type rock, not rocks boulders type stuff. I think it's the big stuff. They said they went 700 feet before hitting rock. So dad, we believe, is sitting on a bunch of Carolina red clay. And that's why we don't think his house had any structural damage. He did have his chimney, which is a huge chimney. It goes up through the middle of the house. The house is built around it. And they threw all the trash from the construction into the sides of the chimney. If a hurricane came through, that chimney would be standing. <laughs> so it's huge and monstrous. But at the top um, of the flue, they have a 
brick pillars and then a concrete cap that sits on top and it shifted it didn't fall it stayed on three of the brick pillars luckily because if it had shifted off and fell it would have gone through the roof of his house and I would have hated to have seen the damage then there are pictures of houses and where the chimney fell into the house was sitting on the sofa ceiling caved in all that so um, I'll show some of the pictures in a minute here are some pictures from ABC channel 11 um, pictures that were sent to them of some of the damage that happened here in Sparta I don't know whose house this is but this is the chimney that I was talking about there's the chimney right underneath it is a couch um, this is all ceiling coming through there's where the chimney frame is inside the house you know where it's supposed to be so the chimney fell this way it took me a little while to figure this out this is a tv right here <laughs> i was like what's wrong with that um, image so they're showing the damage to the tv uh, this is another angle of the chimney in front of the picture window there's another couch over here this is just all ceiling that's fallen through there's a picture of the ceiling this is also from the same station this is a different house uh, where the chimney fell this chimney fell on the outside I don't think it fell on the inside but there's inside damage as well um, you can see cracks in the foundation right there but this is all from the chimney there's cracks in the foundation you can see the damage right through there there's damage all through here cracks all through their um, housing I think that's just shadow there I don't I don't think that parts damaged but it might be it's hard to tell pretty devastating for a lot of folks so I'm starting off with the smaller damage this is on the south wall and you can see that, that crack there and then it continues up like that um, and there's a small crack right there um, don't know if that small crack was new or not but I believe it is I believe it's from this from the earthquake and everything I'm showing is from the 5.1 there's some damage here um, it didn't displace the window at all or anything as you can see the window still works so that's good I've got a big eraser board right here so I can't tell if there's any more damage back there but that's on the south wall this is also the south wall I forgot about that bit of damage right there it's just a little bit um, it's right below a window also but there's no apparent da damage to the window and these could not be seen on the outside this is the west wall I can't quite get to that corner But that right there is new. The insulation is not new. <laughs> um, but we've got a stair step here. Um, it actually starts right there and then goes up. to the top of the foundation there this is also the um, west wall just hairline cracks lateral cracks right there but those are new this is the north wall and 
I am unable to tell if there's any damage on the other side of the wall because it it has dirt all the way to the top of the foundation but I've also got lateral and stair stepping on this wall if you can see right there it starts and then goes up and then goes back behind that wall so that this is the other side of that shelving and you can see the crack gets bigger as it comes through here and we also have another lateral crack right there and you can see where it travels all along Oops, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so it's easier for me to keep the crack in frame I'm taking it all the way Oops. There it is, that's the one we were following. And it goes all the way to that outlet there. Keep that in mind. I can't go straight over, so <laughs> I've got stuff in the way. But it goes to that electrical outlet right there. And I will show you the rest of it. But if we come back over, um, so this is the one that's behind the candle that you guys saw. And then if we come down, this is that lower crack that had gotten bigger that started on the other side of the shelving. And it continues. Straight through here. And it ends here. Now, this was previous stuff when I moved into the house. They had tried to fill some stuff because there's a water. This is, whoo, that's really close. Sorry. Uh, this is where the um, main water line comes in. No damage to the pipes, um, but you can see um, the cracks extended from there. So we followed the main big one, but this is a one in between the top one we followed and this bottom one we followed. And this one goes right to there and then a little bit through here. Um, very hairline kind of stuff. So on this middle section of the north wall, there's um, actually four, la four layers of damage. I don't know if I can get close enough for you guys to see that one. There's a little crack right through there. Don't know if you guys can see that. Um, so there's four layers in this middle section. Um, this one, whew, still way too close, aren't I? Sorry. This one um, is about chest level to me, so about four feet high or one, two, three, four, five, six cinder blocks high somewhere in there. It's probably shorter than four feet because I'm short. <laughs> okay, remember the one I told you guys follow the outlet? This is the outlet I was talking about. This was the one we were following and it continues on through. Making sure I'm not stepping on any dead spiders. It actually goes back behind this picture frame. I haven't gotten that picture frame down because I've got other stuff in the way. The picture did not fall, and it's a big, heavy picture. I'll show you when I get um, closer. But that's the bottom crack. And then I have a um, middle one right there. As you can see, it goes across. Up over to there. And then I've got some damage up on this third level of crack near the top. I 
Um, that's some previous uh, framing. They had a drop-in ceiling down here, um, but it, that top one stops right there at the wood framing. It might go behind it, I'm not sure, uh, but I couldn't get that wood framing down. And to give you an idea of the size of the picture, um, that's how big it is. There's actually two that size hanging up there with one, a smaller one in between. Um, still a large picture frame, but it's smaller than the one you see in the frame. Um, and yes, it's Girl Scout stuffs for anybody who recognizes the brownie symbol there. <laughs> um, I got the gold award when I was in Scouts, and that was all my stuff from it. The stuff that's peeled off is new. That that paint peeled off right there is new. That's not. That paint that flaked off there, that's new. That nail has been there. That's one of the ones that was holding that wood framing stuff up. It is hard to get down. You can see a little bit of where my paints and stuff are. That's my drying rack. My basement is dirty, but to give you an idea of the size, it's, it's not a big house. So that's the west wall. That's the north wall that we just looked at. All the way to the east wall. So not a, a huge house, but the cracks go the entire length of my north wall. One more thing to show you guys. And the county emergency management guy noticed this. Um, but he took my level up to the wall and was able to do that. And that's in between those two cracks. So it's about a quarter of an inch bulged out. Not bad. I have short arms. It's hard to show you guys. In that spot it doesn't do it as much. So really this is the worst spot. And that is, as I slowly back up, that spot that's about a quarter of an inch bulged out is that close to the water line. So, all in all, I'm lucky. Uh, there are houses that had a lot worse damage. I didn't have any structural damage on the first floor. No cracks, uh, plaster held, you know, all that kind of stuff. Considering how much I complain about this house, this is not bad. But I do need to get it fixed. And so that's what I'm working on now. But it, we had an interesting talk about the differences between his house and my house and everything. And so that in itself was an experience. So booms. Um, when I talked to my California family, they figured I was hallucinating or it was fracking or I, I have a friend out in California also. You know, we, we were talking about how we were having Zoom reunions and we were talking about how I could feel uh, these 2.3, 2.1. 2 I think there was a 1.8 that I felt. Um, and he's like, you got to be kidding me. That's like every day in California and I was like I know I know but you know we're out in the country if I'm quiet I don't know if you can hear the crickets I love summertime because I can open the windows and hear the crickets the cicadas when they come we have katydids that make noises so it's very peaceful out here once the neighbors shut up <laughs> And the dog's neighbor, neighbor's dogs shut up. So it's very peaceful. It's very quiet. 
you can easily hear sounds. We're in the mountains, things echo. When we have thunder, sometimes thunder shakes the house, but we have that rolling thunder that just goes on and on and on and just boom kind of um, thunder. These booms from the earthquake were different from the thunder booms because you could tell those were outside. They were amplified maybe would be the word I don't know I don't know the difference how to describe the difference but there's a difference between the thunder booms that we have and the the booms we were having with the earthquake but it was interesting that was something interesting to learn um, that the booms were not hallucinations <laughs> they weren't part of our anxiety paranoia stuff that it bubbled up um, the booms were real and most of them almost all of them were associated with earthquakes because i would post it on facebook and then wait for it to be posted to the usgs site and then you would see it so that was interesting difference between east coast and west coast so according to the USGS, there is a difference between East Coast and West Coast earthquakes. The East Coast has fewer quakes, but bigger stakes in the East, according to the USGS. Why was an earthquake in Virginia felt more than twice the distance than a similar sized earthquake in California? So this was the comparison. This article was written before our 5.1 earthquake. This was the 5.8 magnitude in 2011 in Mineral, Virginia. That earthquake, I felt, I didn't realize it was an earthquake. <laughs> I thought it was a practical joke. Everybody was talking about this earthquake and I was like, nah, there wasn't an earthquake. Even though I felt it, what I thought it was, and this tells you how sensitive this area is, we have Osprey planes fly through. The military train through here all the time. The jets do testing through the mountain ranges all the time. We're right in their path. I was on a tele-supervision call with my supervisor and we're sitting there talking and I'm in my basement. That's where my office is. And all of a sudden when the jets go by and her eyes got big and she's like, what was that? And I said, oh, just a jet. <laughs> They fly close enough sometimes that we can see the pilots in the cockpit. So the jets get really close and they're usually loud. We usually don't feel the jets, but the Ospreys, when they fly by, they rumble the house a bit and they're very loud. So the 5.8 earthquake in Virginia I was watching TV. I remember it clearly. Um, my cat and I were on the couch, uh, Purdy, for those of you that have met her. Um, we were sitting on the couch watching TV, and we felt a little bit of a rumble, and we heard it also, and we kind of looked at each other, and I shrugged my shoulders. I, I counted it was an Osprey plane, but I did question on why it wasn't as loud as usual compared to what we felt. The the feeling and the sound were off, but it was similar to an Osprey plane when they're flying by. It was a few hours later I went to work and found out that there actually was an earthquake. And so that is the only other one I have felt um, in my 46 years of existence. <laughs> so that's part of the reason for why I freaked out and all that kind of stuff. So the 5.8 earthquake in Virginia in 2011 was felt up to 600 miles from the epicenter. Tens of millions of people in the eastern United States and southeastern Canada felt the earthquake. For comparison, a 6.0 earthquake in 2014 in Napa, California was felt as far as 250 miles from the epicenter. Despite the Napa earthquake releasing about twice as much energy as the Virginia earthquake and causing much more damage near the epicenter, it wasn't felt nearly as far away. Scientists are researching, they, I'm skipping around a little bit. Scientists are researching a variety of factors that influence regional differences in the intensity and the effects of the earthquakes. Some of the factors have to do with the nature of the underlying tectonic plates and their geological history. Others are connected to the size and age of buildings. 
Eastern North America has older rocks, some of which formed hundreds of millions of years before those in the West. Those older formations have been exposed to extreme pressures and temperatures, making them harder and often denser. Faults in these older rocks have also had more time to heal, which allows seismic waves to cross them more effectively when an earthquake occurs. In contrast, rocks in the West are younger and broken up by faults that are often younger and have had less time to heal. So when an earthquake occurs, more of the seismic wave energy is absorbed by the faults and the energy doesn't spread as efficiently. So I thought that was interesting because the rocks in the East have healed, you, they, it actually spreads out further. Whereas in the West, because it's more fragmented, the rocks are more fragmented, it captures more of the energy and so it doesn't spread as much. So I think that's interesting. So tectonic plates. As far as plate tectonics, this are the different colors represent different plates. And so for reference, here's the US and Canada, right through here, here's Greenland, um, here is Africa, here is Eurasia, other part of Eurasia, Australia, big open ocean, Russia, because you can see Russia from Alaska. <laughs> Um, India right here. Uh, this is uh, Saudi Arabia and um, Iran, Iraq, all that right in here. So just to give you an idea of the different plates and the arrows here are representing the, the motion. If you just the motion that the plates are moving in. So they're constantly rubbing and bumping on each other. So this map is also the plate tectonics. Sorry, it's blurry. It's blurry for me too. The picture wasn't made to be this big, I don't think. I, I enlarged it at 160% so that we could see it better. Um, so we still have our plates that we were looking at. These red dots are active volcano spots. So if you ever hear about the ring of fire, that's this ring right here and those are volcanoes that have um, developed. But you will notice on an earthquake map, the same pattern, they follow the plate tectonics usually. So keeping in mind the map I showed you, this is the plate tectonics again. They're symbolized in red. So those are the different plates. These dots are recent earthquakes that we've had. So like this one, was a 6.3 in Talagutong, Philippines. Um, and that happened on September 6, 2020. Huge earthquake. I haven't read the news on it yet. And if you'll notice, um, they're showing, I've got the map big enough that this is the same one. So the, the map has wrapped around, just so you know. So here's one edge, here's the other edge. Australia, Australia, uh, just to keep that in mind. What happens if I go in a little bit? Eh, it's not as, you can't see the pattern as well. You'll notice that all these earthquakes, most of them are happening right on, along the edges of the plate tectonics, right through here, following the edges. That was a huge one out in the middle of the ocean. Can I get the big one? A 6.6. .6. And that happened on September 6, 2020. The tidal waves that we have that like uh, that destroyed Thailand and what was that island? I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I believe they said that that tidal wave that they had that it killed so many and destroyed so much was uh, a result of an earthquake that happened in the depths of the ocean floor. I'm pretty sure. These happened just in the last hour. That's why they're red. So Nevada had a 2.6. There's actually a query 
uh, somewhere out in Nevada because it was setting off a lot of quakes. But they will tell you which one is due to earthquakes and which ones are due to query blasts. One of the maps I looked at with um, the history of North Carolina out on the um, outer coast, it had a, a sonic boom. The round ones are earthquakes, and if it's something else, um, there's usually a diamond or a square type signal. But the query blast, I believe, is also a circle because it's in the ground. I think that's why it's also a circle. Um, Alaska's had some out here. There's a 2.5. They just had a 3.9 in Sandpoint, Alaska. So it's kind of interesting to see all these other ones. Iran just had a 5.1 earthquake at 5.30 p.m. on September 6, 2020. That's a 5.3. This one's out in the middle of the ocean out of Hawaii. So why am I talking about plate tectonics and all that? Well, it's expected to have earthquakes around the plate tectonic lines. Um, the interesting thing for us is that we're not on the edge of a plate tectonic. North Carolina is about right in here, right there. That's its little hump for the coast. So we're not on the edge of any plate tectonics. So that was one of the interesting things. So that leads us to, the, these are the ancient fault lines of North Carolina. This right here is the Appalachian Mountains. This little bump in here is Allegheny County. If you follow that tooth, it's like a molar. Um, and Sparta is right here. So again, not right on the fault line, but we have fault lines on both sides of us and it was probably one of these fault lines that was moving that caused our earthquake. So the University of Dallas, Texas did a video on this as um, one of their scientific things and it has some interesting information in it. So I'm going to clip the parts that I think are interesting for you all to know. But this, is, this part is by them. mechanism solution gives us information about the type of fault that slipped and caused the quake. They can be compressional, extensional, or strike slip. The focal mechanism solution for the Sparta earthquake shows us that this earthquake was caused by compression. In other words, the crust on one side of the fault moves upwards, producing the seismic waves that were felt several miles away. The causes them can sometimes be quite the mystery. To figure this one out, we need to go back in time hundreds of millions of years, when the Earth was very different. North America was part of a different continent called Laurentia, while Africa was part of the southern supercontinent of Gondwana. For hundreds of millions of years, these two supercontinents were on a path to collide, and around 300 million years ago, they did, creating the even bigger supercontinent of Pangaea. This collision caused a bunch of compressional faulting in the area and built the Appalachian Mountains, which lie just to the west of the Sparta earthquake. Pangaea lasted about 120 million years until different tectonic forces caused it to split apart and open the Atlantic Ocean. And much like any failed relationship, the east coast of the U.S. has held on to a bit of a grudge. Even though the area is now nowhere near a plate margin, the collision that occurred here 300 million years ago has left it deformed, with plenty of old faults ready to slip and cause an earthquake. It was likely one of the motions on these old grudge type faults that caused the Sparta earthquake. I apologize for me still being dark. Um, I'm not going to turn on the lights just to 
finish this up. But I wanted to give some more information about the earthquake, what I've learned, what I thought was interesting, and I'll post some pictures. I think this is also interesting. These are earthquakes that we've had since 1900 in North Carolina. I've tried to blacken out the other states um, to concentrate on just the earthquakes in North Carolina. Some are right on the edge. I think this one that you can see the top of the bubble actually happened in South Carolina. This one I know was South Carolina. I looked at it before um, I started, I, before I took the snapshot. But just tried to give you an idea. These are all earthquakes. Um, there was one over here on the Outer Banks, which I couldn't fit into the picture. But the one out here was actually a sonic boom. This one is the 5.4 earthquake that was near Asheville, North Carolina. That was in 1916. And that was the largest earthquake before the Sparta one which Sparta didn't beat it. Sparta was only a 5.1. But all the earthquakes from 1916 until this year were all smaller. And you can tell they're all smaller. I think the 1916 one is the worst one we had. Um, well, no, I'm sorry. As far as on a pictured on a map comparison. But I found history of there was one in Wilkes County that was supposed to have been the worst. So this was a presentation that was turned into a PDF uh, from the state, Geolo state geologist of North Carolina, North Carolina Geological Survey, Division of Land Resources, and this was back in 2014. This report says that from 1568 to 1992, there were 2,371 earthquakes uh, plotted in the southeastern United States. Um, it's got Maryland, West Virginia, part of Kentucky, part of Tennessee. We've got Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida in the diagram that they're showing. And like I said, I'm sorry I can't uh, bring it up. I don't know how. According to this report, 22 times from 1735 to present, well, present being 2014, earthquakes have caused damage in North Carolina. So it's not a lot. The greatest damage was from the 1861 Wilkesboro earthquake. There was also an 1886 Charleston, South Carolina earthquake, the 1916 Asheville, North Carolina earthquake, and then the 1926 Mitchell County, North Carolina earthquake. The last damaging event that we had was in 1981 in Henderson County. This one had damage as well, so that would change that statistic. Sparta was declared a uh, state of emergency due to the damage that happened. There are several buildings that are unsafe for businesses to operate in downtown. Um, there was one of the hair salons had to close. Um, I don't know if it was the hair salon or a barber shop, but they had to close because it was unsafe um, structurally uh, for them to be in the building. There's a lot of the um, facades that go up, kind of like uh, in old Western movies where the front goes up. Um, there's nothing behind it. Um, we have brick ones like that, and uh, so those were those had to be dismantled because they were leaning and cracked and um, crumbling a little bit. So uh, we did have damage. We had road damage. I was trying to think of other damage. Uh, there was water damage uh, on one of the roads that was damaged um, because of the pipes underneath busting. There were several people on my Facebook friends list who were posting about their anxiety not being able to sleep, being worried about having another big one, um, that sort of. And even though I knew intellectually that having another big one was unlikely, it still had me a little bit jittery, especially when you feel the booms. I, I posted the one that I felt, and that was a two point, was it a 2.1 or a 2.3? 
that I posted on my channel here. That's not what this is about. So, um, and you, you saw my eyes get big and freeze, and I just kind of froze for a moment because you're waiting to see what's going to happen. So, yeah, uh, this has just been an interesting event. I've learned a lot, and I, if you've made it this far in this presentation <laughs> of my experience and what I've learned, then bless ya, <laughs> because um, I don't know if I would have sat and listened to the whole thing, but I thought it was very interesting, all the stuff that I've learned, and I'll try to put all the links in the description uh, so that you can follow and read them for yourself and kind of go from there. But thank you guys for taking the time to listen. I hope you all have a good evening. Thank you for putting up with me being in the dark. I, I figured I'd have something up on the page the entire time. I didn't think I would talk, so that's why I kept the lights out.